Oklahoma's number one rated newscast, broadcasting live from 12 studios. This is News 12 at 5.30 a.m. Straight ahead, a local representative may trade in his seat in Congress to become the next U.S. Attorney General. How one expert says he compares to the other candidates. Just scores, just their things going. Six local firefighters just returned after helping with the California wildfires. What they saw that makes them grateful to be back in Texoma. Good morning, Texoma. Thank you so much for waking up with us this Thanksgiving. I'm Jeremy Thomas. Lauren Smith has the morning off. Meteorologist Tom Miller joining us now for a check of that forecast this Thanksgiving. And Tom, it seems like conditions are pretty good out there. Yeah, not bad at all. We have the clear skies, the cold temperatures, but it's going to turn out to be a beautiful day with plenty of sunshine. Temperatures around 61, really, if you can't get out and enjoy it. And Weather-wise, we shouldn't have any travel problems going to Grandma's house. As you can see, temperatures right now are in the 30s across Texoma, under clear skies, and uh, we are looking at some huge changes towards the end of the weekend. But really, for Thanksgiving, this is great weather. Get out and enjoy it. Now, we could see some showers after midnight tonight and Friday morning, but they'll be very scattered, very light, with clearing skies in the afternoon. However, the winds will pick up Friday afternoon, and they'll stay with us through Sunday. The catch is Sunday. Those winds will be out of the north with a strong cold front. Well, you can see our hour by hour temperature wise looking at around 42 at 930. I think lunchtime temperatures about 58 degrees and we'll be topping out around 61 to 62. 53 at 7 o'clock and after midnight looking at temperatures in the upper 40s for you shoppers who are going out early Friday morning forecasts in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Tom. The new District 62 state rep was sworn in yesterday. <laughs> Reggie Smith was sworn in by former representative and current Grayson County District Judge Larry Phillips. Smith held the ceremony at the Woodlands Nursing Home in Denison so that his father could be present. Smith will represent Grayson, Fannin, and Delta counties in the Texas House. Orientation starts next week in Austin, followed by the legislative session in January. As controversy swirls around the country's acting attorney general, a Texoma representative may be in the running to earn the job on a permanent basis. Washington correspondent Cal Madura has more on Representative John Ratcliffe's chances. Spokespeople for Representative Ratcliffe say they're not addressing reports and rumors that President Trump is considering him for the job. The White House wouldn't discuss it with us either. But conservative legal scholar John Malcolm of the Heritage Foundation says the short list to become the country's next top prosecutor is actually quite long. Malcolm says Ratcliffe's credentials as a former federal terrorism prosecutor, U.S. attorney for Eastern Texas, and lawmaker leave him with the right resume for the job. You know, I, he certainly is well qualified. I don't think he quite has the uh, profile of, say, a Lindsey Graham or a Chris Christie or a Pam Bondi. You're hearing rumors of the president beginning the interview uh, process, but which one of these people will emerge is a little difficult to say at this point. Under the law, the president has a little more than six months left before he has to make a pick to succeed acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Malcolm expects a decision will come after special counsel Robert Mueller completes his investigation into possible ties between the president's campaign and Russia. And Representative Ratcliffe will be back to work in the House next week when Congress returns from the Thanksgiving break. In Washington, Kyle Madura, News 12. 84 people dead, about 870 people unaccounted for, more than 13,000 homes destroyed, and hundreds of thousands of acres burned in the California wildfires. Last Monday, six local firefighters drove 31 hours to Southern California to help. They just returned yesterday in time for the holiday. They told News 12's Meredith McCown what it was like. It was, it was hard to imagine and, and explain when you get up on a mountain and you look out across there as far as you can see and everything's burnt. Lamar County Emergency Management Coordinator and McKinney Firefighter Quincy Blunt and five other North Texas firemen spent the last 10 days in Malibu, California in L.A. and Ventura counties. Some of the more than 200 firefighters from Texas who helped battle the California wildfires. Now, our main job was uh, going around to the edges of the fire and making sure everything was put out where it wouldn't flare back up. Other tasks were helping residents and relieving the California firefighters. Blunt says they extinguished hot spots that were left from the Woolsey fire, burning almost 97,000 acres and killing three people. So, I mean, it was just, just scorched, just everything was gone. Black sticks sticking up in the air where trees used to be. Uh, there's houses burn all around. It's definitely been an experience. I mean, 
never, I'm sure all four of us never thought we'd ever get a day to go fight fires anywhere outside of Texas. Harris Firefighter Corey Parks, Captain Matthew Barbie, and Allen Fire Engineer Michael Fox say the Woolsey fire was contained, so they were released and on their way home Wednesday, just in time for Thanksgiving. The fire's not out until the entire line is, is mopped up and checked and somebody has laid eyes on every bit of it. This holiday, Blunt says he'll be thinking about the families in California. Some of those families lost everything they had uh, and they, they're just thankful that they're still alive. In Paris, Meredith McCown, News 12. Thankful to be alive. Dozens of seniors are counting their blessings this Thanksgiving after losing their homes in a fire this fall. Many of them were rescued from the blaze by the Marines, and as Nicole Killian reports, the service members are coming to their aid again just in time for the holiday. Captain Trey Gregory is always ready to serve. Turkey, there you go. Even when he and his comrades got called up for dinner duty on Thanksgiving. Definitely glad we could show some hugs, get some smiles, serve some food, um, you know, celebrate the holidays. In mid-September, Captain Gregory was among a handful of Marines who rushed from their barracks into this burning senior apartment complex in southeast Washington to get residents out. They needed help. He sat down with CBS News right after it happened, and the memories are still vivid. We ran through all four floors of the building and just picked people up. Um, carry them, just try to get them rescued them safety. So of course. Rescue, yeah, of course. Now a chance for those they saved now, to say thank you once course. more, you including you Betty House. I thank God for them and what they did for us, and I'll never forget it. And I got a picture today. <laughs> While many of these folks are thankful for the food and the fellowship, what they'd be most grateful for this Thanksgiving is to be able to return home. I don't have nothing. Mary Laney is one of roughly 90 residents who remains in temporary housing at a hotel. It's hard. I mean, you know, it's the holiday and you're used to your family coming around, but there's no place for them to come. And we've lost so much. But on this day, they're getting and giving something back. A lot of the Marines uh, are able to go back home for whatever reason. And so I think events like this really foster more family. These are senior citizens. This could have been my, my grandparents or something like that. So I'm just glad that we could be there to support them. Embracing the few and the proud. Happy holidays. You, you enjoy your meal? With hearts full. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Washington. Millions of Americans are traveling this Thanksgiving, possibly the most in more than a decade. News 9's Ashley Holden went to the Will Rogers World Airport to see how well travelers were prepared. AAA predicts this will be the highest travel volume since 2005. We talked to some holiday travelers about their strategies for making it to their flight on time. I'm going to Virginia, Northern Virginia, to be with my family. This week, Will Rogers World Airport is busy with people flying near to Houston, Texas, and far. And where are you guys going? New Orleans. New Orleans. And what are you guys doing there? Uh, we're going home to my family. Some still in pajamas, others with plenty of luggage. Most trying to make it somewhere for the food. The food. <laughs> We've got our two Frenchies with us today, so the whole family is going. Brianna Steelman and her family are off to L.A. with a few extra friends. So I have uh, Bennett here. Steelman made sure her family got to the airport with plenty of time. My mom texted me last night and said that we should be here about two, two and a half hours early. They weren't the only ones. Pretty early. Pretty early. <laughs> about an hour and a half. An hour. Travelers making sure they make the most out of their Thanksgiving break. It, I have been very excited to get out of school. We did see some longer than usual security lines, so make sure you leave yourself plenty of time to make it to your gate. On the scene on the story from Will Rogers World Airport, Ashley Holden, News 9. On well, the time now, 539 meteorologist Tom Miller joining us now. And Tom, for those who are traveling or maybe even doing some smoking outside with the turkeys, how's it looking out there? You know, it's looking fantastic. A little chilly this morning. It'll be cool tomorrow morning for those shoppers. But weather-wise, we should have no problems getting around for the next, what, if you go 100 miles to the east, north, south, west, you're going to be fantastic. Plus